When it comes to building a chatbot in Flowwise, you can also analyze the activity of people chatting with the AI chatbot on your website or wherever you embed it via Langfuse. That is a free tool that you can directly connect with your chat flow in Flowwise. And this allows you to see all the interactions that happen between users and the chatbot and also analyze all the steps that happened in the background within your chatbot to come to the answer that it gives. So this is helpful for troubleshooting. It is helpful to understand what the process in the backend looks like in terms of running your chatbot and you can also track the cost of each interaction and each input and output of your open ai calls so this is what it looks like for example this is langfuse i created a project that is called simo ai and you can see here the traces are the most important things that i find the most valuable when it comes to looking at the data from the chatbot and the traces are all the interactions that happen so each trace has a unique id the timestamp of when it happened the session so each session can have many traces. You can see the ID can be the same across multiple sessions because the session is an interaction of the user without refreshing the chat. And then you can see here the total cost of that trace as well. And if you click on it, you can then see here what happened. So there is the input. There is a question from a user that says want PDFs. So that's a user message. This is the chat history. There is previous messages in the same session. So the user said hello first, and then the chat flow responded hi there how can i assist you today and then the user asked want pdfs so that's the current trace that i'm looking at here and then i can see the output from this question one pdf and that's the output of the chat flow sure thing here are two options for pdfs you might find interesting and then there is some markdown formatted text down here so on the right hand side i can see all the steps that happened in this interaction so i can see here the runnable sequence this is the question and the output and most importantly, what I care the most about is to look at the chat OpenAI call, for example. That's what it looks like. I can see in JSON format. And I can also see the vector store retriever. So that's particularly useful for rug-based chatbots, which is what I'm using here. So that's why I'm interested in this step, specifically in the trace. Because here I can see that based on the input, can you provide me with some PDFs? That's what the chatbot retrieved in the vector database that I'm using. One, two, three four items from the database according to that question so based on the embedding this is what the items that were retrieved and this is helpful for troubleshooting because sometimes the answers might be very inaccurate or slightly inaccurate and you want to adjust what's going on so this gives you a lot of clarity in terms of what happens in the chat flow in the background and then you can adjust the prompts or the query that you use accordingly so in this video we're looking at how to set up the connection between langfuse and flowwise which is very simple and then the other step is how can you use the Langfuse API, for example, to then store those messages in Ocean database, as an example, that's what I do, where then you can maybe look at keywords that happen across all the sessions, the sentiment of the messages. You can keep track of the total cost here and the sum of the cost, and you can always access the trace via Langfuse here, via the URL. So the first thing to know is that when you access a chat flow in Flowwise, here is my chat flow, I can go to settings in the top right corner then select configuration and then go to the analyze chat flow option here and there are a few websites that you can use so langfuse is just one of them but the other ones work just as well i just happened to select langfuse so when you click on it you can then connect your credentials and then make sure to activate it to connect your credentials you can click on the drop down menu then create a new and here we have the name of the credential this is just for you for reference and then the secret key the public key and the endpoint and you can find this information in Langfuse when you go to settings, API keys, and that's where you can find the API keys. And when you go to general, you can see the host name, and that's the endpoint that you want to use in the dedicated input here, endpoint. Then you click on add, and it will add your connection just like this. Then you can activate it, save the chat flow, and from then on, whether you message in the chat flow in Flowwise for testing purposes, or if you send messages directly on the embedded widget that you have on your website or anywhere on the internet, those conversations will be automatically traced in Langfuse. So that's how to set it up. And the final thing that I did for now is to save those messages, those traces from Langfuse to Notion. Because then maybe I can also see via a chart that I can create here how many messages per week, for example. And I'm going to do a bar chart. I want to show the created date week on the x-axis do new to old omit zero values actually let's show them i want to show the count and that's okay for now so this is the total messages sent by week you can see from the newest to the oldest one and if i want i can also create 
the total cost by week. So X axis will be credit time. And on the Y axis, I want to see total cost sum. I don't want to group by anything. That is good. So I can see over time the trend and I can monitor data easily from a centralized place. And this automation is set up via Make, but you can set it up with whatever tool you like. This is using the Langfuse API and the Motion API. If we look at it here, these are the steps of the automation. First, I get messages. This is using the Flowwise API. Then I iterate on them because this is an array that needs to be iterated to process each message as a separate bundle. And then I look at a filter here, created date later than today minus seven days. And that's just because I want to process the messages of the last week because this scenario runs once per week each Friday, as you can see here. So I don't want to create duplicates. And there is no way to filter directly on the Flowwise API based on the date. So that's why I'm filtering here. Then we search message in Notion because maybe it already exists. So I just want to check that no duplication happens. This is a double check. And if the message doesn't exist, checking based on the ID of the message that is stored in Notion, as you can see here, message ID. If that doesn't exist, then I create the message in Notion, just like this, where I have the method ID as the primary key, and then all these other properties here. Then I aggregate that data so that in the next step, I can get the Langfuse trace. So the aggregation happens grouping the messages by the session ID, because if multiple messages have the same session ID, it means that they happened on the same conversation. So it's the same user exchanging multiple interactions with the chat flow. That's why I want to bundle those together. And then I want to get the Langfuse trace. So in here, we're using the Langfuse API. This is the endpoint public slash traces. The method is get, and then we pass the session ID query string parameter from the previous module. That is the session ID that we group by. And finally, we add the total cost to the message. And this will happen only on the first message of that session. So for example, here you can see that from hello all the way to sure thing, this is just one session. So the cost is only saved in the first message of that session. And this is the total cost for the whole session right here. And that's to avoid duplications. So that's the automation. And now you know how to connect Langfuse with your Flowwise chat flow to analyze your chat flow and see what happens exactly in the backend. That can be particularly useful for seeing the vector store retrieval database and if your functions and queries work well. You can find all the previous video in this series that I made on how to create a flow-wise chat flow to embed on your website. You can also find my chat flow in my website, linked in the description. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.